Grids in Grid Framework are infinitely large, and we use renderers to display a finite slice of them. The larger the slice, the more we have to pay for in terms of performance. This can become a problem if we have to cover a very large or potentially infinite area. Fortunately, we can work around this by using some simple math to readjust our slice according to the camera on the fly, so that the performance impact remains near zero. Here's my setup. I have got a camera object. It has a script attached for movement. And I've got a grid. And now I'm going to hit play. I can use my arrow keys to move around, hold shift to move faster. And as you can see right now, nothing is happening. The grid is not resizing, it's just sitting there. So here's our plan. I'm going to take the rectangular grid and I'm going to only manipulate its renderer. So the grid itself, I'm going to leave it as it is. But what I'm going to change is this rendering range. So I'm going to change the from and I'm going to change the to. Both of these are vectors and we can adjust them dynamically according to our camera position. Switch to our script and the first thing we need to do is we need a reference to the render of the grid. So we first import the namespace grid framework dot render us instead of grids now and we're going to use rectangular. So go to our public variables, public parallel epiped is the class of the renderer. And I'm going to call it renderer just. There will be a private method which will resize the grid. And we will call the method after our movement. but only if a condition is met. So we'll leave it to false for now and we'll come back in a second. Here's our strategy for resizing the grid. There will be a variable called shift and I'm going to set it to vector 3 0 for now. And I'm going to add this shift to the renderers from and I'm going to add it to the renderers too as well. So here's what the shift variable does. The shift variable is simply the shift our camera has taken from its previous position. So if I move the camera like this, I'm going to add this vector and I'm going to add it to the lower range and the upper range of the grid and by this I'm going to keep the grid's rendering range, or rather the renderer's rendering range, inside this bounding box of the camera. The next thing I need is a private variable of type vector3, which will be the last position of the camera. And I'm going to set it to its initial value when the game starts. Last position is simply transform.position and now I can use this last position in order to compute the shift. Oops, not if, it's a for loop from 0 to 2 and our shifts i-th coordinate is the current position so transform.position i minus the last position index i and now we can set the last position to the new value. We can try out what we already have by changing this condition to true. true. And now what is going to happen is if I as I move the camera these two points of the grid are of our renderer are going to get adjusted accordingly, so this rendering range always stays in, in this position. So let's hit play. And as you can see, as I move around, the rendering range of the grid adjusts. I can also try it in the scene. Move around the camera, 
And as you can see, these two endpoints are constantly shifting along our camera. Of course, this isn't what we really wanted. What we want is for the rendering range to adjust itself to the camera's bounding box. So we'll need to set the initial values for from and to as the game starts. Now here's something where you'll just have to trust me. The extent of our camera can be computed like this horizontally and like this vertically. And we'll also need the x and y position of the camera object itself. So we can now adjust the renderers um, from, which will be a new vector 3. And the x-coordinate is the x-position of our camera minus the horizontal extent of our camera. And some similar for the y-position, for the y-range. And for our 2, we do similar thing, except we use plus because we are growing the range. So let's hit play. And the range of our grid has expanded to exactly cover the bounding box of the camera. And if we move the camera around, we can see the grid is exactly matching our camera. So let's head back to the scene. And we always see we always see the grid. There's one final improvement we can make if we look back at our scene. So what is happening is anytime I've moved the camera, the grid is complete the rendering range has been readjusted. What I would like instead <coughs> is to have some sort of extra buffer. So the rendering range exceeds the camera by a slight, by a slightly bit. And if we, if I move a camera just a bit inside this extra buffer range, then there should be no recomputation performed. I'm going to add a private variable. Private const float and I'm going to call it buffer and let's set it to 2. And I'm going to add this buffer here plus buffer. So the buffer will be added to our initial size. So we have this buffer. But right now, even if we even with the buffer, the range is being recomputed every frame. And this is because if we look back at our condition, we set the resizing to true every frame. So we need to come up with a better condition. There will be two variables. The first one is beyond x. And we are beyond x if the distance power position and our last position is greater or equal than the buffer. Same thing for y. And our condition is met if we are beyond x or beyond y. Hit play one more final time. And as you can see, as long as I stay inside this buffer, nothing is going to happen, but as I approach the edge of the buffer, the grid is going to be recomputed. So as long as I stay inside this range, there is no recomputation performed and our grid is rendered for free, or almost for free. But once I move away, it is readjusted. Try it out in the scene, and we get seamless transitions.